Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, look at that. What? Oh no. Oh my God, look at that. Ugh. Join the team. Hey team, this is McGuire Review, and today we're going to take a look at Monster Hunter World. This is the board game from SFG, you can see right here. Now this has been a recent uh, Kickstarter delivery. This was this game was Kickstarted. They have started to deliver this. That A number of them already are delivered. Uh, it's been out here for a little bit now. And with that said, there is a number of uh, videos that have already been made uh, on this game. So I don't want to just be another one of those channels that just regurgitates the same information over and over again. So because there's so many how to plays, because there's so many, how does the game actually work explaining the game? We're not really going to go into that for this video. This is the video where if you're in the store and you're looking at this game or you're still kind of on the fence deciding, do I, do I really want to get another uh, boss battler? Uh, because there are a number of these types of games that are out right now in the market. Uh, hopefully this video will help you make that decision. Okay, so just to make it clear what's actually out there right now, you do have the uh, Ancient Forest. It's it's this one here. It is a contained kind of box set as is. And then there is another one that is more kind of desert themed, and I have that as well. Same thing, you got another box. You don't need both of them. They're not expansions of one another. They are... Um, they are a game in a box. You can get one or the other. So that's the other thing. If you see them both in the store, don't feel like they're expansions of something or you got to have them both. You can put them together and there are rules to be able to do that if you want to play an overarching campaign that has a little bit of this one and a little bit of the other one. You can do that, but it's not required. Basically, just pick the, the monsters and the theme that you like the best and start with that one. I will also say that they are about ready to do another Kickstarter for Monster Hunter World that will be based on the Iceborne expansion from the video games. So you'll be able to get the Iceborne ex one as well. Again, I say expansion, but it's not going to be an expansion. It will be a standalone game that you can just get that if you want. If, you, if this is years into the future and you're watching this and you see all three of them on a shelf in a store, again, pick the one you like the best. I do know that the Iceborne one is going to have some different mechanics and some different things built in, so it may be a little bit different than the experience you'll get in the two box sets that are already out. Okay, so that gets that out of the way. Now, when it comes to this game, it is a boss battler, and that's about as far as we're going to go into all the different, you know, how does this game play. It's a boss battler, which essentially means you are going to have a character and the, the core part of this gameplay is going to be your characters combating and battling different monsters. And there's a number of different sculpts and monsters that come in this game. There are four different ones that are in uh, the, the bases. And then there was some other stuff that came through the Kickstarters, which I have as well, where you got some extra monsters uh, and some extra character sculpts and, and whatnot if you got part of the, the Kickstarter. However... Pretty much everything that you're going to need uh, is in these base editions. So the retail editions of these games are really, really well done. It wasn't like it was just the Kickstarter's awesome and the retail one is like nowhere near as good. The retail release is solid. It has everything that you need. I actually don't have anything out on the table, nor have I used anything from any of the Kickstarter add-ons yet. Um, that I happen to actually purchase. I, I just kind of like the sculpts that came in the retail edition. Um, and I'm going through kind of that experience with the, with the monsters that come with the retail release. Now, one of the things that you're going to need to know about this game is because it's a boss battler, um, that's primarily what you're going to be doing when you play. There is a campaign. There is some downtime when you go. Um, you can choose to do downtime to kind of stay in the city to do some things and use some of your your time within the campaign to do that. But there isn't a lot, and I, and I want to make sure this is specified, and I'll talk to this part first. Um, I don't want people to think that they're going to get this giant RPG. You know, it's not like that from the game, right? Like, you, you're not going to be able to take any character and skill them different ways with different types of weapons, and maybe they're ranged, maybe they're not ranged, there's this there's this RPG sort of character build that does not exist, okay? 
The game is very, very focused in on the mechanic and the gameplay of your character, um, not necessarily leveling up, but gearing up, and then getting stronger and stronger, taking on stronger and stronger monsters. Uh, and it's that it's that boss battle. That's what you get out of this game, and and that's done very, very well. But don't think of it from this giant, you know, RPG character arc campaign. It's just not there. The campaign does exist in this game, but the campaign is essentially just made up of stringing boss battle after boss battle after boss battle in a row and then saying, okay, you have to defeat a certain type of monster, like a certain um, difficulty of one of these monsters before your campaign days run out. And the campaign days are set as 25 days. So every time you take on a monster, for the most part, every time you take on the monster, unless it's the easiest one, the first time it uses a day, and then every time past, then it wouldn't. But any other monster above the the, the weakest version of, the, of that monster, which would be a single star, the strongest would be a four star, uh, it does take a day in the campaign. So you would go to your sheet here, and you would just mark off on your campaign, oh, I used a day. If you decide to not go on a quest, and that's what it's called when you go to, to hunt and fight a monster, then you would use a day and stay in town, and there's a number of things you can do while you're in town. It's the standard stuff like you would be looking to uh, trade uh, materials, maybe cash in some things to get something else that you want. You can go and get buffs for various different things. Um, you you can actually go to a handler if, in fact, you've tried a certain type of monster too many times where the game would not allow you to try it again. To go and try it more times, you'd have to go to this handler and, and spend time to be able to do that. Uh, there's even an action where you can pet the pooch and in the this is something from the Kickstarter. There was a little um, that's too far to reach now. There's a little tiny uh, pig, a miniature that came. Well, let me try to get it. Eh, yeah, here it is. So little tiny uh, pig miniature that came. Um, you'll be able to do this if you didn't get the Kickstarter, but you do get the miniature if you did the Kickstarter, and you'll be able to pet this pooch. And if you pet the pooch, I'm almost positive that came only as a little Kickstarter add-on. If you pet this little pooch, nothing happens. It, it just basically uh, gives you. It's kind of from the game. It's sort of, it's luck, right? It's like, oh, I pet the pet the pet the pooch for luck, right? So um, that that's really that's really all that is. All right, and that that is essentially the campaign. Um, you will just kind of continue to d decide every single time when you're done with a battle. Do we just go right into another battle? I mean, there is a there is a phase after the battle where you would then kind of reset everything. You'd be able to cash in all your things that your your loot that you've got, and you've kind of you'll have the sheet to mark down different parts and loot and things you get from the monster, and then you can use that to gear up and kind of craft to get new weapons. You're not ever really going to per se, get like item cards that you would craft together. It's just, you would write down here, oh, I found a bone, I found a monster knee bone, I found an ancient bone, I found this wing drake hide, I've got these monster parts, various other things you might come upon when you're going through and gaining loot or you're on the hunt. And then you would just cash those in and say, okay, now I can take this new card of this new item. All the items are going to be very defined. They're going to be right here on these sheets, and they are going to be specific per character. The armor is generic. Any character can use any of these types of armors, and they're all laid out right there with exactly which components you need to acquire to get it and the benefits those armor give you. They're going to give you defenses against elemental and physical damage. They're going to give you some extra little abilities, things of that. But when it comes to the actual weapons, the weapons are very specific per character, so that's something to understand as well. It isn't like you can start as a general uh, ranged bow type character and then all of a sudden say, you know, mid-campaign I'd like to pick up this giant sword and do some melee in this next fight. Doesn't work like that. Your character will keep um, these weapons over the course of gameplay and the bow character, the ranged character, has to have some type of a bow weapon. And you can get really powerful, um, you know, legendary style weapons, but you have to defeat certain monsters and get certain monster parts to be able to craft and get that weapon. And generally, that's how the weapons are going to work in this game. There are a number of them. It's not 
out of control by any means. It isn't overwhelming. There's only a certain set of weapons you can get. And frankly, once you kind of get on one of these paths, you probably will stick with a specific type of, of bow. And they're all kind of different depending on the monster that you're fighting. The other thing I will call out uh, is you can only get certain weapons from certain different types of monsters. So uh, the character I'm playing here with the sword and the shield, which I really like, is uh, only able to get really, really cool stuff from uh, two of the main monsters in the set. And then the other two here are kind of more general things that you can get but if you really want those special monster created weapons you can only get them from these two monsters where another character may uh, get them from two of the other different monsters so that's something that you're going to want to do and weigh with your party as you go through in deciding well which monster do we hunt next because that's always your choice okay the other th the other main thing that i'll call out is when you do upgrade your weapons, your attack cards will change, your damage cards will, will change, and that's really all I'll say about that. The weapons do kind of scale nicely in the game. It isn't like all your attack cards and damage cards stay the same through the whole game, and then you just get this more powerful weapon. Whenever the weapon changes, there are things that will change in your attack and your, and your damage decks as well, which I thought was cool and really kind of mixes well with the actual video game that this is based on that's where i'll go next if you love monster hunter world the video game you're going to like this board game because they well i can't guarantee that but more than likely you will they did a really really good job translating this particular game into a board game into a tabletop experience and they did it really really well with the with the actual boss battle could they have made the whole like visiting the different cities and like having more of this rpg campaign and side quests and doing all this stuff they could have built that into this game they could potentially continue to do that stuff over time and add on as like expansions which i don't think would be a bad idea however they chose to really focus this game in on the core mechanic of what monster hunter world is really about it's that boss battle and they've done that very well the actual gameplay of when you get into the boss battle is a lot of fun. And they did a good job with the monsters, uh, what they call the psych card, which is right here. It's a larger card that kind of uh, pretty much just shows the monster parts, how you break them, how much armor they have, um, things you can do against the monster. You can kind of pull up right here. There's special abilities the monster may have, as well as... Um, resistances the monster would have in the monster's life. That's what you're going to find on this card. Very easy. I know it kind of feels overwhelming sort of initially looking at this card, but once you understand what everything is, it, it's really, really easy to use. And on the back of the card, you basically have the monster reward table. And you'll roll some dice depending on how many players there are and different things that happen over the course of the game. You'll roll some dice to, uh, to get loot at the end once you've defeated the monster, if you do defeat the monster. If you don't, then you don't get any loot. Um, and then the monster will have some behavior cards as well. That just indicates its attacks. The one thing that I will say, um, now we'll talk about some of the things that are maybe uh, on the other side of this, is the behavior cards don't change no matter how difficult the, the monster gets. There are a couple, there are a few cards that will, will come in and out of this deck depending on what happens in the hunt phase. But the core behavior deck does not change. You are fighting the exact same monster over and over and over again. The only difference is they have more health, they have more armor, you know, they might have some other type of like special ability tweak, but it is kind of the same monster over and over again. I think, you know, that, that that's a tough one, right? Um, when you only have four monsters that are in the the base box and, and i get it right that's why there's multiple box sets that can get a little i'll just say it it can get a little boring over time because uh it's super fun the first four six maybe even eight battles or after you fought every single monster on the easiest and maybe like a little bit harder then it sort of gets kind of like okay i i guess we'll just continue this campaign and we'll just fight this monster again for like the third or fourth time because we need to 
you know, this this char- this character needs to defeat this monster all the way to the end to be able to get the best bow before we take on the big bad, like the hardest monster in this game. That's, you know, I think that's the side where um, it, that that may get a little draining over time. The, the campaigns do feel long from that perspective. You have to defeat a four-star monster within 25 campaign days. And again, every fight is a day, or every time you stay back in town to do those extra things I talked about, that's a day. So a 25-day campaign, let's say you're really, really good and you defeat it within day 16 or or 18, and you know you defeat it within, yeah, let's say you defeat it within day 15, right? It, that's still, that's a lot of monster battles over and over and over again with the same monster. Um, and it just, I don't know, It's it seems like it's a long time for the game to be out on the table. Um, it's it, it can get a little repetitive, right? And that's what I'm trying to say, is that even though the game is really, really well designed from this perspective, doing that campaign can get a little repetitive. Uh, there is another way to play this game if you don't want to do the campaign and go through like that whole that whole series of events, um, because it is essentially just fight after fight after fight after fight strung together. You can do something called the arena mode, which is you can pick whatever monster you want, whatever hardness you want, and it's all set up in the book. And then you say how many players you want. They actually give you specific preset gear so that you're kind of skilled up depending on what you're battling. And then you can just all go in and like have a battle to the death with like a specific monster. But that's all it would be. You beat the monster, you win the game. You don't beat the monster, you lose the game. There isn't all of this like collecting loot and, and leveling up your gear. And you only get that if you're really doing the campaign. And there is a fun aspect to that as well. But but again, after that 6th, 7th, 8th game, you're like, okay, I've skilled up most of my stuff. I got some more powerful things. I feel like I'm just fighting this monster over and over and over again. Like, that's where it does start to, to kind of wean off a little bit for me. Um, and I'm just being honest there. It, and it's it's hard to kind of... I, I know if you're you're watching this and you're trying to make the decision on the purchase, I would recommend the purchase of the game as a boss fighter if you really like boss fighters because I think it's really done well. Like, they really... I can't emphasize that enough. They really nailed the mechanics on that aspect and that part of the gameplay um, that links up with the video game. They really did nail it. They did such a good job. And and it is fun. And I, And as we've been playing this game... We've been having a ton of fun. Don't get me wrong. But to be fair from a review and a purchase perspective, because if you're going to buy these these sets, and I, and I wouldn't just go out and be like, oh, I'm getting them all, right? Because you're going to spend quite a bit. Um, I would just pick one of them, right? I would get one. I would buy it. I would play it. Pick your favorite theme, right? Your favorite environment. See how you like it. And then if you really, really like it and you want more, then go back and, and buy more. I would not recommend going out and just buying everything that you see on the shelf. Because like, oh my god, Monster Hunter World. I love Monster Hunter World. Have that reserve. I definitely recommend getting one of these box sets. I really think you will enjoy it if you like a boss battler. If you don't like a boss battler and you're buying this game because you think it's some kind of like RPG experience where you're going to character level up and you're going to go on this like fantasy adventure, you're not going to get that in this title. So... Don't buy it for that. Buy it for the boss battle. The only thing that you would get from an adventure perspective is the hunt. So before the boss battle, you will go on this hunt to find the boss. And there is some decisions to be made. There's some story points. There's basically a set of scripts where it will say, okay, you hear this and there's a pile of shit laying on the ground. Uh, what do you do? Do you investigate the shit? Option one. Do you uh, run from the noises that you hear behind you? It'll give you like one to three options generally. And you will select as a party what you want to do. And there will be outcomes specific for what those what those selections are. You may have to burn some of your time cards. You'll lose if this runs out and you need to draw one as you're in their fight. So that you have to manage. You may get some extra items. You may you know, dig and find some things, and you wouldn't have got that extra stuff if you would have moved on. 
You may have some negative outcomes and lose health. That's happened to us. Uh, or it may be a really good outcome, and all of a sudden you, you know, you you gain a potion or you gain something really good that you can use when you're in the battle. So that's the only kind of adventure part you're going to get from this, and it's fun. That part probably lasts, you know, maybe ten minutes as you're reading these scripts and making decisions and going through it until you're actually doing your fight. Um, and it can be that can be kind of a a fun little aspect before you get in, and it does make you feel like you're kind of gearing up and getting ready for this fight once you've left left town. So again, it's a focused way um, to to kind of give you the experience that you get from the game without going overboard. And I think that's another, and that's where I'll kind of end this video is saying what I think they did here is they cut the things from the game and the design that would have gone probably too deep and too overboard. They did a really good job saying, let's take a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and giving you just these little bite-sized chunks of those things, but orchestrating the whole core mechanic of the game around that, that boss fight. And that's where I think this game is a buy, and they've done a really good job, is focusing in on the bare minimum of what you need for everything, but still getting the best of what, you know, the game is really about. Uh, and that's where it's good. It's just, again, going through those campaigns, it, it does drain it for me. I, I'm one where I just, I, and it's just, maybe it's just me. I want that new experience every time. I want that adventure. And I'll keep playing this game. Don't, don't get me wrong, like this game's not leaving the collection. This is this is one of my favorite boss fighters right now. Because if I want to play a boss fighter, this game does it well, right? And I'm gonna throw it on the table and we're gonna do one, two, maybe three games, and then it's gonna go in the box and I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be satisfied and I'm gonna to wanna to go on to something else. I'm not gonna to wanna to sit down and play 15, 20 games to make a campaign on a box set, right? I'm just it's not that's not what I'm gonna do. Um, so I think from a design perspective, um, if I was doing it, I, I probably would have suggested doing something a little bit different with the length of the campaign or the difficulty of the monsters or maybe a way allowing you to level up faster. There are some rules in the book to be able to make things easier or longer, depending on how you want to play the game. I just don't, it's like minor stuff, right? I just, I think there should have been a, something different in the core aspect of the game that would have made that campaign experience richer and like you're you're wanting to come back for that 10th and 12th battle right other than just like oh now i might be able to get this final bow that i need or this final item but i'm fighting the same monster like for the 15th time that that's that's the only thing that can get a little bit draining um and and i think there there are ways they could have maybe did that a little bit better to just make you be able to skill and gear up faster. Like like maybe the whole campaign only lasts 12 days or 15 days. I think would have been um, I think would have been more jo enjoyable. And then you could have found ways to have different like story arcs on those campaigns. Uh, but but again, that would have been more design, more components, more stuff. Um, and I and I think they have some they really have some opportunities down the road for being able to create expansions to be able to do that in a very focused way and then this broader campaign can just kind of be this is more the epic campaign of someone that just wants to go all in and and, and play that that number of games to to either win or lose the campaign okay so that's what i think on monster hunter world you know that and that's what i wanted the video to be again I apologize to folks that were looking kind of like how to play the game and what are all the rules and it's just there's too many videos out there that already cover that stuff. I really wanted to get it I really wanted to get into the I'm in the store or I saw it and I'm I'm going to look it up and I'm I'm going to make the decision in the next week. I hope this video helps you make that decision on if this is really a game that's going to be for you or not. There's just too many games in the industry now and they're too expensive. Everything is getting super expensive. It's like 100 bucks, 90 bucks, 70 bucks plus for for any type of major box experience like this. You got to be able to use your money wise and you got to be able to get the stuff that you really are going to enjoy and it's going to have that longevity for you and not something where you're just burning your cash and like a month later you're like, oh, I'm just looking to sell this game now. So that's what I'm trying to help with and hopefully this video did help you. 
So, with that, keep rolling them, Crits team. It's been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time.